It's not some science fantasy effect from 2001. This electronic display emanating from Australia's largest computer is a picture of the condition past, present and future of planet Earth. The program was originally devised by a scientist working from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jay Forrester. It was developed under the auspices of the Club of Rome by an MIT research team to present a complex model of the world and what we humans are doing to it. The program, called World One, doesn't pretend to be a precise forecast. What it does for the first time in man's history on the planet is to look at the world as one system. It shows that Earth cannot sustain present population and industrial growth for much more than a few decades. It shows that simply cleaning up our car exhausts and making some small effort to limit our families simply isn't enough. It's like an electronic guided tour of our global behaviour since 1900 and where that behaviour will lead us. Well, this is the printed version of what we've just seen on the television screen. And what looks at first to be just a maze of computer characteristics is really a system of very simple graphs which project what's going to happen to the planet over the next 150 years if we don't do something drastic to stop it. Down the left-hand side of the graph is the date, 1900, 1940, 1980, 2020, right down to 2060. Now, each of these lines of, of, of letters represents a curve showing some aspect of the condition of the planet. The further out this way they go, the greater that figure is, the further this way, uh, the less. For example, P represents population. So here it is at 1900 and then it comes up to 1940, it starts to take off. Here we are at 1980, up to the turn of the century, and then it starts to peter off. Let's now have a look at this next curve, the Q curve, which is the quality of life. And this is represented by, for example, the amount of space people have, the uh, amount of money they have to spend, the amount of food they have to eat. Now, it increases rapidly up to 1940, but from 1940 on, the quality of life diminishes. And here we are about the turn of the century and we come up to the year 2020 and it's really come right back. More people of course means that you start to chew up your supply of natural resources and this is this curve here, the end curve. And it shows that slowly but steadily the pool of natural wealth in the world, natural resources, minerals, oil and so on, is slowly but steadily diminishing. What was the real message of Limits to Growth? Chapter 1 The book, The Limits to Growth, was commissioned by the Club of Rome and published in 1972. The authors, Dennis Meadows, Jorgen Randers and Danella Meadows, published updates in 1992 and 2004. The Limits to Growth was printed in millions of copies but its results have often been misunderstood or misinterpreted. The imprecise summary that stuck with the book was that growth will come to an end. In fact, limits to growth did not talk about economic growth, and certainly did not say that economic growth had come to a halt. Limits to growth spoke, using today's language, about growth in the human ecological footprint, in growing physical impacts on a finite planet. The aim of this presentation is to explain what the original book actually said, translating its findings into today's language, and to see whether limits to growth still had relevance. Chapter 2 The Key Conclusions Limits to Growth was a scenario analysis of 12 possible futures, from 1972 to 2100. Its three main original conclusions were using now the words of 1972. 1. If the present growth trends in world population, industrialization, pollution, food production and resource depletion continues unchanged, the limits to growth on this planet will be reached sometime within the next 100 years. The most probable result will be a rather sudden and uncontrollable decline in both population and industrial capacity. 2. It is possible to alter these growth trends and to establish a condition of ecological and economic stability that is sustainable far into the future. 
The state of global sustainability could be designed so that the basic material needs of each person on Earth are satisfied, and each person has an equal opportunity to realize his individual human potential. Three, if the world's people decide to strive for this second outcome rather than the first, the sooner they begin working to attain it, the greater will be their chances of success. Chapter six. Has the message of limits to growth stood the test of time? Interestingly, over the forty years since 1970, the real world has followed scenario number one in limits to growth. This is the so-called business as usual scenario, the world model standard run. Population and economy has continued to grow as they did in the decades before 1970, and as a consequence, the world moved into overshoot. This apparently occurred in the 1980s. Chapter seven. A new concept of growth. If we measure progress in an increase of quality of life. And not of material turnover, then humanity can grow for a very long time. It would grow in terms of security, happiness, stability, and sustainability.